Hey, I'm Brandon. This is Live Actuary, bringing strategies for balancing success. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing the conflict that our high achieving selves create. So let's get into it. As usual, timestamps will be up here. The two topics we'll be talking about are the conflict that it creates in our own life, conflict it creates in business, as well as uh, I'll give you all a life update at the end. The first conflict that being high achieving creates is this conflict in our personal lives. Like how do we not become myopically focused on the extraordinary? How do we embrace who we are while striving for excellence at the same time? I really wanted to talk about this idea when I heard these two questions in a podcast and they were, how do we be self accepting without becoming complacent? And how can you be high achieving without being self abusing? Now they went further on to discuss in the podcast that a good way of doing this is to schedule things. And that's what I have in my past and my life done is just schedule time for both sides. Like I schedule time for making these YouTube videos. I schedule time for studying. I schedule time for looking after myself, meal prepping and working out. And I know that if I didn't schedule time for these things, I just, I wouldn't do them. I would, I just wouldn't do them. Uh, I feel like an important point to remember when scheduling time for things is to not schedule time with the intent of completing tasks, but rather scheduling time for the task itself. And don't put uh, unnecessary stress on yourself to complete things, rather just spend time doing them and, and just enjoy that process. <laughs> the second area of conflict of being high achieving is within business. Now, it's not likely I'm talking to a CEO, but what I can say is that I'm definitely talking to a group of individuals that are likely to be leaders and the CEOs of the world one day. So I think it's valuable for us to kind of sit down and have this conversation. And one of the things I want to do is redefine those two sentences or two questions that we, that were stated previously, but for and within business. Now there are two people that we can kind of draw from to be able to morph these two sentences into a business logic. Um, the first one is Bill Campbell, where he very clearly illustrates that people are the company. So if people are the company, then really our personal lives issue conflict is still applicable within the company because people are the company. The second person we can pull from is the founder of Rakuten. One thing he says, and one of the rules he has is the three of 10 rule. I think that's what it's called. Uh, but basically the idea is that when staff or a company grows by a factor of three, everything breaks, all the processes, all of this, so everything doesn't function the way it should anymore. And that's what he has learned through his life building Rakuten as a company. The way I've been able to rewrite these sentences are the first one being, there's a line between accepting processes that exist and creating work due to inefficiency, as well as how do we be a high achieving growth based company without reducing employee engagement. Now these two questions are extremely difficult for companies to define. At the end of the day, trusting the people within the company to define the line between these two questions will go a long way to enhancing the culture within a company to be more engaged as well as drive that growth that the company is looking for. <laughs> Overall, there's a pretty big conflict between being high achieving and being self accepting. Now. With this video, my goal is just to have a fun thought experiment about how we, as you know, future leaders, define what joy is within our companies and how we can really work with our current company as well as uh, the ones we might build in the future to really make the world just a more joyful place to be in. And that's all I can really hope for with this. As always, at the end of the video, I'll have a life update. Hit that like button if you like the video, subscribe if you want to join the actuarial journey and leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to get back to them or even make a video on my Ask an Actuarial Analyst videos. So thanks for watching as always. So I guess my life update this time, um, I really don't have anything to update. I've been making videos more frequently, so I have less life updates between the videos, I guess. Like last year I uploaded eight videos. This year I've uploaded I don't know how many yet, but like I'm, I'm almost ready to double that. And it's only been like two months. So uh, there isn't much time for my life to develop between to show you guys document more stuff. Like I have a lot of stuff going on in my life, but like 
I wouldn't really want to document that stuff. I don't know if that's, maybe leave a comment down below if you think that's kind of interesting, if you just want to see like vlog style stuff. I don't know, but uh, I guess for this video, what I'll do is I'll just leave it with um, some weird outro stuff of me just completely ruining the script of this video. Um, make the future of companies more enjoyable. Enhance the enjoyability of companies. Enhance the enjoyability. Enhance the joy that we experience working with companies. As always, as always, as always, as always. So thanks for watching. Wow.